Hello, folks. Hope everyone's well out there. Hope you're enjoying yourself. Actually, that's what I'd like to unpack a little bit today. Talk a little bit about joy. You, you've heard of joy, haven't you? I mean, some of us, you know, it's almost a bad word. And certainly something we don't directly or intentionally experience often. But it's critically important. Yes, we need to work and pay bills and take care of, of, of people um, and even take care of ourselves. But an important part of it is joy. Joy. Joy gives us visions of possibilities, of higher manifestations, of rewards, of validation, of inspiration. We all need joy in our lives. Joy gives us energy. Joy gives us motivation. Can even provide a direction and clarity of purpose. It gives us an opportunity to relax. <laughs> In today's world, it is very easy to stay on uh, duty, full alert all the time. Many people are uh, suffering from some sleep disorders uh, because there's so much, so many demands, so much anxiety and such. And one of the solutions to these hectic, demanding lifestyles is we need more joy, more joy. Now, when I'm talking about joy, that's not necessarily going out and partying and drinking or eating anything that you want to eat or saying anything you want to say. But joy is about feeding the self. It's about doing things that are pleasant, rewarding, that help us to get in touch with ourselves in a positive way and help us to reinforce our values, our uh, perceptions, and even our um, ambitions for life. So, so joy is... Um, not so much as I see it about doing, but it's more about being. It's about being, you know. I mean, most of us do things all the time. It's just we have on on uh, buttons. The off buttons don't work real well. Mm -hmm. But joy is about being. Mm -hmm. Joy is about experiencing, being present. It's about connecting with and feeling good. So joy might include things like um, being in nature, gardening, fishing, being on the water, creativity, creativity. All of us, from my way of seeing it, all of us are gifted with some way of being creative. Some of us sing, some of us dance, some of us um, do photography, uh, um, write, but all of us have a way of being creative. To me, creativity is when we're downloading from the universe and just expressing it through our vehicle. And again, that helps us to be in contact with more in contact with the universe and allowing it to flow through us to energize, to cleanse us, to purify us in the process. You know, um, in our society, one of the challenges to joy is um, our obsession with, um, with winning competition. So often, happiness is defined 
as one's ability to excel in comparison to other folks, to be better at whatever you do, um, to be the, the goat, uh, the best, or number one, or whatever. I'm saying to you that that's a, uh, a false narrative. Because mm-hmm. joy is available to all of us. It's not about winning. It's not about completing. It's about being present in whatever you're doing. For instance, um, one of the things that uh, science says bring people more joy in the world is uh, on the list is uh, dancing. And so dancing is number two in the world, the things that bring people most joy. But they're not talking about people doing steps, you know, or being going through routines or whatever. Talk about when people flow with the music and stop th- thinking about it, you know, when doing more of, um, say, dancing like nobody's looking. When you're just moving with the mu- music, you're flowing, you're in harmony with a larger vibration, if you will. Mm-hmm. S- same thing can happen when you're out in nature, you're walking a trail, um, you're um, in there with the trees and the, and the animals and the, and the water and, and, and such, and you just uh, begin to feel freer, you feel more connected, more in harmony with, with, with your environment. Mm-hmm. Uh, they actually call that uh, forest bathing, or you can go do hang out at the ocean, they call it, um, ocean, ocean ba- bathing, where you're just allowing the icons, the ions, excuse me, the ions from uh, the forest or the water to, to saturate you and help to calm and, and nourish uh, you physically as well as t- mentally. Mm-hmm. So, Joy is important, and we all need to find ways to um, turn off from our daily grinds and find some joy. I remember talking to um, someone the other day, and she was talking about one of the things she does after work is she likes to um, watch mysteries. And so we, un- we unpack that, the dramas and stuff like that. And it became very clear that though they can be very enticing and stimulating, if not ad- addictive, addictive, that's not what we're talking about when we say joy. Now, watching some of the mindless comedies, you know, can uh, take a person in another way, just help them relax. And anything that helps you laugh in a genuine way, not laugh at people, but, but laugh with situations and, and, and laugh from the joy that you, you feel in experiencing, um, that is healthy. That is healthy. So, 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 so joy, um, is a way of nurturing our spirits, of, of reinforcing our nature, of helping us to uh, see possibilities in terms of who we are and where life life is, as opposed to looking at um, the downsides and the negatives and the challenges all the time, but really helping us to see the light, the bright side, and to engage with, with that. Mm-hmm. The thing that some research says makes people most happy is being of service and being acknowledged for that. Service is a way that people can actualize their purpose to contribute what they have to give to someone or something that has needs. That's validating, that's affirming, that's encouraging for all of us when you say that I can really help. I can make a significant contribution that makes a situation better. So it, 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 it validates our reason for being, our sense of purpose, 
our, our, our sense of who we are when we can be of service in a genuine way. And, and when I say in a genuine way, I'm not talking about in a way that advertises how much gave, you gave time and, and energy and whatever, because <laughs> that, that, that can be its own reward. I'm talking about when it's just between you and the person or the energies that you are serving that you express yourself. That, to me, is real service. And that's when the reward comes as joy because it's done um, in a, um, how should I say, in a, in a quiet way that it's its own reward as opposed to an advertisement um, that you get credit for th through some external sources like that. Mm -hmm. so, so joy. Joy is very important. And sometimes one of the things that's required for us to actually experience joy is for us to set some boundaries and limits, to learn to say no so we can maintain our space, our, our agency, um, our, um, our, our efforts to do the things that are important to us. Mm -hmm. Because there's all <laughs> there's always influences coming at us all the time in today's contemporary lifestyles. There's thousand things that's coming at us, but we re we recharge our batteries when we can experience some joy and unplug from those things and tap into the larger uh, universe in a way that is nurturing, uh, fulfilling, and acknowledging. So, what do you think, Daryl? Um, that's something out. This is something that I have been thinking about recently. Um, I saw something that somebody said on uh, LinkedIn, the uh, platform LinkedIn. So, it was a video where someone was talking about the need to work hard is the bottom line. You know, they mm -hmm. were being kind of excessive with it, but it was about working hard. And one of the comments that I read was a, a guy who was saying that, I guess he and his wife have their own business. And he said, oh, we work 100 hours a week. And the harder we work, the, you know, whatever the case may be. And I'm like, that doesn't sound very healthy at all. <laughs> you know, there, there's so much emphasis that's put on grinding, um, hustling, um, achieving mm -hmm. the whole capitalist type mindset that even though a lot of people do enjoy what they do, don't get mm -hmm. me wrong. You have mm -hmm. people that mm -hmm. enjoy their work, but at the end of the day, it's still work. Mm -hmm. So it's something that you're doing, you know, for financial gain, you know, for, um, like I said, for achievement, things like that. And when it has that result attached to it, it's a bit less pure, in my opinion, mm. you know, because at the end of the day, it's work. You can mm. find purpose and, and um, fulfillment through what you do. But I'm, I'm just not sure how I feel about that when it's consuming you in that way. Mm. So for myself personally, one thing that I can say is that I originally started photography as a release. Mm. You know, I was going mm. through some stressful times with my full time job. I needed an outlet. Mm -hmm. And so I started to do photography. I picked up a camera um, more seriously and started doing it more consistently. But what happens with that is that when you get pretty good at something, people start to ask you to do it for them. Mm. And so I said, OK, you know, I, I do it for this person, for that person. Everything's cool. And then next thing you know, it turns into a business. So I guess the pitfall of that is that it became less personal to me mm -hmm. and it became more of something that i was doing as a means of income mm -hmm. and slowly but surely it started to take some of the joy out of it mm -hmm. for me because i was just giving it all away and i was more so than doing something that i enjoyed i was fulfilling request and so i got to a point where i realized i got to take some of this back you know so i don't do as much photography professionally as I used to, because I had to take some back for myself. So um, recently I went to um, the Afram Festival. And so I walked around for a while. And for those who aren't aware, the Afram Festival is African-American um, festival that's annual in, um, in Baltimore. 
every summer. And so I found myself walking around. I brought my camera with me. Just personally, nobody asked me to come and take any pictures. I did it for me. Mm. And so I walked around, took some, you know, photos of people who would allow me to. And then I found myself settling at, they had one stage that was um, for the day it was dedicated to reggae. Mm. And so you had your reggae stage. And so I ended up spending most of the afternoon going into the evening there. And so you had all this great music. People were dancing. There was a lot of love. And so I started capturing that energy. And that started to fill me up Mm. because I wasn't doing it out of a sense of obligation. I Mm. wasn't doing it, you know, for a specific result. I was just feeling all of this joy and love and connection and energy. And I was just capturing these moments and it just filled me up. And so that allowed me to tap into some joy because previously, you know, for the past however many years, I was doing it more so as a requirement than as something more personal and and special. And so that, that just filled me up that day. So sometimes you end up having to take some, back you know yes. for yourself because we end we, we we spend so much time giving so much of ourselves away that you have to retain a bit for your for yourself so true i'm i'm talking to so many um mature folks mm-hmm. um elders <laughs> mm-hmm. who um at a point vocation m- means more when it's has freedom in it and flexibility than when it just has money and and power. Because when I can have more charge over my time, how I do, what I do, and and, and with whom, uh, that is more rewarding than dancing to somebody else's tune all the time. And what I find as people become more mature, that becomes uh, attractive, if not a goal for many of us like that. Said, said, let let me let me do me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I like when you say, you know, you cut back on it, and then at your own, on your own, you go out to Afram because it feels good to you to take pictures and document stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So it's a moment where it's like I'm in the moment, being present. I'm dancing, taking a few pictures, dancing some more, receiving the good music and good, you know, energy and connection, and it it felt it felt really really good you know that with me being um independent you know being a freelancer i could go really hard and be traveling all the time and i do travel Mm -hmm. you know but i could be traveling way more than i do but you kind of have to set your life up in the way that's healthy Mm -hmm. and the way that that works for you Mm -hmm. and if everything becomes about work about I, i heard someone say i think it's this guy named um jason wilson he talks a lot about masculinity and kind of the um how we've been um miseducated you know when Mm -hmm. it comes to masculinity and he said i always hear this word grind you know people use the word grind but to grind means to like wear down Mm -hmm. you know so Mm -hmm. it's like that's not you know what i want to be that's not what i want to do i don't want to constantly wear myself down and that's what society would have you do yeah you know in order to reach that financial goal is to just grind 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 but what about you know what about joy yeah, you know, what, what about, about joy? Comfort, what about know? joy? Joy is necessary, and it is part of our birthright. So each one of us it behooves us to make some attempts to find out what brings you joy. And as you implied, what brings you joy today may not be what's on the agenda for, for tomorrow, but you still need to find out what is most appropriate joy-wise right now for you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like you always say, you know, about being your own scientist, try different things. Yeah, yeah. You know, one of the things that I um, that I was doing a couple of years ago, I'm going to pick it up again um, when weather gets a little cooler, is I would get out and ride my scooter. <laughs> you know, I got a little scooter and I would go around and, you know, go to different trails and ride my scooter. And that, that brought me joy. So our most... Um, our most pure, innocent, and free selves are often the children in us. Mm. You know, not the ones that are impacted by you know yeah, the yeah. life experiences, but before real life really got to you. you got know. you. So you say, you say part of joy is being in touch with the the child within, with that child. Yes. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. We have to nurture that child too, yeah. and 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 give it um, joy. 
Yeah, allow it to um, raise the joy in us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. <laughs> Sounds good. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, this Western society that we live in um, probably focuses less on joy than most places in the world. Although, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, you know, we work more hours, we have more, more sleep deprived, um, probably have more anxiety like that. Our lifestyles are not, um, very people oriented. So as I see it, part of the transition, if not transformation that we're going through is about, um, us focusing more on ourselves and each other as people with legitimate needs and um, even helping the systems that uh, we interact with to be more people oriented. Mm -hmm. um, no, nobody works like Americans. Mm -hmm. You know, we, uh, like I said, we, we're sleep deprived and um, um, overworked and, you know, and and then people start to compensate all kinds of uh, unhealthy ways, mm. you know. Again, w w whether that's you know drugs or food, gambling, or sex, it's trying to get something to give us a little um, um, shot of, of dopamine. dopamine. Yeah, yeah. I mm. I was talking to my mother recently, and my mother's retired now. She worked, um, you know, for the government for over thirty years. And so um, I call her sometimes in the morning and she's just waking up. Now, my mother used to get up five o'clock you know, every morning. <laughs> mm -hmm. And now she wakes up whenever she feels like it. She goes to sleep whenever she feels like it. And we were talking about that. And I say, yeah, my, I mean, we're not designed as human beings to, you know, be on this, this ridiculous clock where we're getting up before the sun comes up and we're working until, you know, way after the sun goes down. You know, we're so um, unregulated, you know, because, I mean, you go back to the, um, you know, the industrial time and Henry Ford and the factories and stuff like that and instituting the nine to five workday and 40 hours a week and all that other stuff. And next thing you know, you're working all this overtime and our bodies are so um, off of what we would naturally be otherwise because we're overworked, you know, we're stressed. So mm -hmm. when you're able to free yourself from that, it actually feels really good. Like, you know what? I'm I'm going back to that. Um, what do you what do you, you you know the word that I'm thinking about? The um the uh sunrise and sunset. What do you call that? The oh, the clock, the um circadian rhythm. Circadian rhythm, exactly. Yeah, yeah. When mm -hmm. you could, you know, be more attuned with that. Yes. It feels way more natural. Yeah, it it is it is more more natural. And you can be more fully fully yourself yeah so yes 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 we 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 do better when we nurture ourselves and joy is one way that we nurture ourselves like that so so your assignment is to uh enjoy uh, find some healthy ways to um enjoy yourself to be present, to be to be creative, to be connected, to be responsive in your life journey. Make some time, try out some different things, and see what works for you. Nurture that um, child within you, that it's a legitimate part of you that needs your attention, needs your uh, positive energy, and your vision of health and possibilities. Blessings to you all. We'll check in again real soon. Peace. <laughs>